Welcome to Franklin Almanac. I'm Paula Xeni Manjari. Welcome to our fourth edition of Almanac, a compendium of life in Franklin. As always, we'll bring you important stories. What's happened? What's happening? What matters? In the town of Franklin, our residents take giving back very seriously. Many know that change begins in small ways, perhaps with just one step. A simple hello, buying someone coffee, or just being there in a time of need. Today, we'll show you just how Franklin embraces the spirit of giving back. In 2016, an astounding 1.6 million new cases of cancer were diagnosed in America. On average, over 500,000 are taken from us annually, a number too high by all measure. However, one national organization is working hard to change these numbers for the better. Relay for Life is a fundraising event where team members take turns walking around a designated path. Because cancer never rests, neither do they. Among the large group of national volunteers, we have our dedicated locals as well. The Relay for Life of Franklin, Bellingham, and Rentham have collaborated to fundraise in our own backyard with an assist from Poor Richard's Wine and Spirits. I caught up with our local Relay for Life committee members to discuss this year's upcoming relay. Um, relay for Life is part of the American Cancer Society. Um, we have a group that consists of Franklin, Bellingham, and Rentham, the three towns um, relay together in June at King Philip, excuse me, at um, Tri-County. Um, so we are doing a relay-wide relay wine tasting this evening. It's a $5 donation. You can come down, taste some wines. It helps out small businesses like Poor Richard's. Um, and also we um, raise funds. Uh, the funds can go towards the Hope Lodge, which um, gives lodging to any um, anyone going through cancer treatments and their families. It can also go towards uh, life-saving research. It can go towards um, the Look Good, Feel Better campaigns, which helps um, women and, and men who um, have lost all of their hair uh, look good and feel better about themselves. Um, I'm a cancer survivor myself, and I did lose all of my hair, and I did participate in those programs. And I can tell you, um, as a survivor from our perspective, just having the American Cancer Society there for us and understanding what we're going through and giving us support, it means the world to us. Um, I, uh, knock on wood, will be in remission for five years this May. Um, and I have, thank you, I have dedicated each and every single year to raising funds for Relay for Life. Um, I feel like I was given a second chance and I like to give back. We're spreading awareness that we're here and come and see us and participate. It's open to the public, um, but also if you'd like to join a team, create a team, you can go to relayforlife.org and find the Franklin, Bellingham, Rentham um, group and create a team. Or we actually have a Franklin Cares team this year. So if you wanna just kind of dip your toes into Relay, Join the Franklin Cares team. I happen to be the captain, so <laughs> I'll guide you through Relay. Why are you participating in the Relay for Life event? Sure. Well, my um, brother-in-law has uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, so that brought us into the event originally. And so my family's been part of this now for about five or six years. And so it's a nice way to give back, not only to a cause that's very near and dear to our hearts, but also to the local community and those struggling with um, cancer. And how are you involved with Relay for Life? Uh, this year um, is the first year that my daughter and myself are both on the committee. And so we are very actively involved, not only with the fundraising, but um, with all aspects of getting to know more about what the American Cancer Society does for um, all the patients coming even into the Boston area and really serving those in need um, with housing and anything else that they might need during their treatments. So tell me a little bit about what encouraged you to hold a fundraiser for Relay for Life here. We actually hold a lot of fundraisers here at Poor Richards. We've done, I believe we're at 47 now in the four years that we've been open. So typically one a month, maybe a little bit more. And we've done fundraisers as diverse as the Perfect Cat Shelter from Medway, a lot of high school sports teams, um, schools, PCO organizations, um, dog rescue, et cetera, the food pantry. and. It's our way of advertising. Basically, we reach out to community organizations that you know, might have a need for fundraising. We help them with that. Their customers come in. They become our customers. And at the end of the day, we're 
acquiring customers, but also helping out an organization that we'd like to help out. If you are interested in donating or walking with the Franklin Cares team in June, be sure to log on to relayforlife.org to find the Franklin, Bellingham, and Rentham group. From there, you can register to walk or donate to this worthy cause. Somewhere, someone's bowl is empty. That's a simple message that Franklin High School's Empty Bowls Club want to send to the community. A message that resonates with over 500 families right here in Franklin. The Franklin Food Pantry recently partnered up with the Empty Bowls Club to promote hunger awareness. They're currently gearing up for their second annual Empty Bowls Dinner. A simple meal of bread and soup will set the stage for attendees to learn how hunger impacts our community. And they'll walk away with their very own custom-made bowl. I met up with club members and Franklin Food Pantry staff to get a behind-the-scenes look at the making of the empty bowls. The partnership really started um, about two years ago. The Franklin Food Pantry was thinking about hosting an um, empty bowls dinner. And at the same time, we were approached by um, Brenna Johnson from the Franklin High School about doing an event. And so it was really perfect timing. And we teamed up um, and held our first annual dinner last year. And um, it's been, just been a great partnership. Now, how has the collaboration benefited the Franklin Food Pantry? So the collaboration has benefited us in a couple of ways. It's really way, helped to raise awareness and then money. So the first annual dinner raised over $6,000 and we use all that money to buy um, fresh meat, um, bread, uh, produce, um, and really meat and things that we can't get through a food drive. So it's really benefited us financially as well. Now, why is this event, in your opinion, would you say so important to the Franklin community? I think it's so important because we're all, um, a lot of us, we're truly blessed in Franklin and um, this really helps to raise awareness about the need and, um, and it's a great way for people to come and give back. It's a very family friendly event and a great way to raise awareness and, and funds for the Franklin Food Pantry. What inspired the idea of this club? Um, Franklin High School actually has a long history of the Empty Bowls Club. I think it's been around for a good 15 to 20 years. Um, it disappeared for a little while and about I started teaching at the high school about five years ago and then last year I felt ready to kind of take on the club itself and the mission of the club. So we're in year two of our project and the goal from the beginning has been to you know teach students how to work with clay but also how to kind of give back to the community. Now I love the message that you're spreading today that somewhere someone's bowl is empty. How are you using these bowls to help fight hunger in Franklin? Sure. So last year we uh, partnered with the Franklin Food Pantry and it's been a great collaboration between the Empty Bowls Club at the high school and the pantry itself. And we're coming together to raise awareness that there's 500 families in the Franklin community that use the pantry on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's, that's a really big number for a community like this. And so the mission is, is that we come together as a school and a community and make about 300 to 400 bowls. And then we have a, the, the summation of our work is we have a fundraiser on, on May 2nd at the high school where you get a simple meal of soup and bread. And the, the proceeds from that event, the ticket sales, goes directly back to the Franklin Food Pantry. And then the pantry can take that money you know, and use that to build their resources and their outreach. Well, tell me a little bit about why the both of you decided to join the club, the Empty Bowls Club here. Well, me personally, I have a very large passion for art. And I've taken like the classes here at the high school. And when Ms. Johnson told me about the club, I just like right away, I was like, oh, I want to do that because like I love working with clay and like making bowls. And like I love the um, outcome of the club, like the money going to the Franklin Food Pantry. So it really made me want to join. See, I personally am the complete opposite of her. Um, I don't really take that many art classes in school. I, um, but a lot of my friends were doing the club. And I also just thought it was like such a cool idea. And since I don't take any art classes, I thought this was like a good alternative to be able to actually like have an art class basically every week and be able to like help everyone out and also to raise money for the food pantry. So making these bowls looks super fun in my opinion. So tell me what your favorite part about it is. My favorite part about making the bowls is that they're all just so different from each other and they're so unique. So it's so fun to see like how many different variety of bowls like the end product is like I just love the making of them and how different they all are. Um, my favorite part of probably making the bowls is seeing how 
um, everyone touches almost every bowl. Like how it's not like my bowl is like throughout the whole thing. Like I don't have like an individual project. It's more so like, oh, I'll just pick this one up today and work on it today. And seeing like the collaboration of the whole group making in, like bowls, it honestly, they all come out so cool. Usually it's just the Franklin High School students who are making the bowls. This way the community can really get like involved in it and like it will make people want to come to the event at the end of the year more. Yeah, so we're hoping to get more people to come on May 2nd to our event. Um, we also just want, when people do come to the event, to be able to like go out to the table and be like, hey, I made that bowl. <laughs> so it kind of gives them incentive to come. And um, also just we want to be more involved in the community. Last year we were kind of just like in Franklin High School more so. And so we want to like expand our horizons and help the community because it is about helping the community. The Empty Bowls Dinner benefiting the Franklin Food Pantry will be held at the Franklin High School Cafeteria on Tuesday, May 2nd from 6 to 8 p.m. If you would like to help, tickets will be going on sale April 1st, so stay tuned. For twins Giovanna and Olivia Sabini Late, giving back to the community is in their blood, literally. These two Franklin High School seniors have been donating blood to the Boston Children's Hospital since the age of 16. When one of the twins underwent major surgery and needed blood at the age of 12, the importance of donating blood really hit close to home. The twins recently coordinated their second blood drive through the Boston Children's Hospital as part of their National Honor Society service project. We caught up with the girls at the Hockamock YMCA to discuss their latest blood drive. Well, I love that you guys are holding this blood drive here today. Um, tell me what inspired you to do this. Uh, well, when I was um, 12 years old, I had a spinal fusion at Children's Hospital, um, and when I was there, I just saw so many children like myself who needed blood and who were in the same situation, and we depended upon other people. Um, and then when I turned 16, um, you know, I just started donating. Um, right on my birthday, I went and donated, um, and when we got to... Um, into National Honor Society, we decided to take it a step further and um, do blood drives for our community. So, well, my... my I guess my purpose is really just to give back to Children's Hospital. Um, my entire family has been there for many generations and they've given, given so much to us and so it's my way of saying thank you to everyone. Now have you guys held other blood drives and what was the outcome of that? Um, yes, in November we held our first blood drive on Veterans Day and we got a great turnout. We had 37 units of blood collected so it was really, really fantastic, yeah. Probably more than a I would say 100 children were helped because about a pint helps three to four children. So, yeah. It was so I know that the goal for you guys today is to really encourage other people, young people like yourselves, to be lifelong donors. Why is that so important to you? Well, I think, you know, we're so young and, you know, our bodies are so healthy that our blood naturally will be um, usually healthy. Um, and, you know, it's just, a, you know, a small way to give back, you know, if, 10 minutes of just donating can help save a, a family and a child's life. So for us, it's really minimal, The you know, like the bee sting that you kind of um, feel when the needle is put in, but yeah. Um, I don't know, to me, it's just, like Giovanna said, we're so healthy, we haven't been exposed to a lot, and so um, we have more of a chance to be able to donate. So giving back and being able to donate is... Um, one of my goals to like try to get kids to do it because it's also a nice, like Giovanna said, <laughs> a nice way to give back to the community um, and say thank you and really change somebody's life. It might not change your life, but it really does change somebody else's life. What do you want to say to other people like yourselves who want to get involved but don't know how to? What is your message to them? Well, I think um, definitely blood drives. You know, if you just look up blood drives, Franklin, MA, um, we try to, you know, do... Um, we only donate usually to Boston Children's Hospital because um, that's where we were um, treated. But, um, you know, there's Red Cross, there's Boston Children's Hospital, other hospitals that do blood drives, and they're actually pretty frequent. Um, and also if you just go onto sites, uh, hospital sites, and go onto the um, blood center webpage, there you can make an appointment, you can log in, so yeah. Yeah, um, tips of donating, um, drink a lot of water the day before and day of, um, eats lots of greens and, you know, iron-rich foods because that's really helps with your um, hemoglobin.
I hear that you're going to be giving blood today to the Boston Children's Hospital. Why did you decide to come in and give blood? Because my grandmother passed away from cancer, so since I was little, I always wanted to donate. So. Now, why do you think it's important to give back to an organization like this? Because I've always went to Children's Boston for anything I had to go to. And they were so awesome, and they were caring and everything. If you missed their event but are still interested in donating, visit www.childrenshospital.org slash ways to help. Listen carefully to the following statements. I give more to others than I do myself. I make decisions that will please others over myself. I sometimes get panic attacks because I'm so overwhelmed. Does this sound like you? Regardless of your age or gender, we all have reached a point in our lives where we have spent more time pleasing others over ourselves. But if someone told you it's okay to be selfish sometimes, would you believe them? Well, that's the exact advice Dr. Ellen would give you. Having previously attained degrees in physiology, neurology, and a doctorate in physical therapy, this woman's empowerment coach visited Franklin High School's 40% Club to speak about anxiety, personal development, and simply, how to be unapologetically you. Here's a look. So I know that you are speaking to these students because you are a women's empowerment coach. So tell me why you decided to get into that field. Um, you know, it was kind of a long personal development journey and I just started to get really into, you know, I hired my own coach because I was in sort of a, you know, not a great place emotionally. And I got on this kind of personal development path um, and I really felt strongly that I was connecting with a lot of women and um, I just think we're at such a crucial time in history where women's issues are huge. How do you think that being a women's empowerment coach is changing people's lives when you, you know, get in contact with them? Um, well, as an empowerment coach, it's my job to kind of lift people up in um, emotional levels, basically. So taking women who are feeling a lot of shame or guilt or, you know, un uh, all these kinds of emotions that make them think that they're doing something wrong when really it's just because there's all this kind of pressure on them to be a certain way or to look a certain way or to do a certain thing and that pressure causes a lot of lower emotional levels um, so empowerment coaching we take people from the lower emotional levels and lift them up higher and higher to the higher levels like peace and joy and love that's the ultimate goal yeah <laughs> So why do you think it's so important to speak to a group of high school students like you are today? Um, well, I think in high school is when I was picking up a lot of cues myself. I think they have a lot of influences from teachers and parents and peers, and they're, they're getting all of these messages from other people and trying to figure out where they fit in into all of this. So a type of coaching style I do, I call it body coaching, B-O-D-H-I, um, which is in Buddhism, the body is the true self, the enlightened self. Um, and I've combined my passions, you know, wordplay on, because I'm a physical therapist as well, so wordplay on healing the body, healing the true self. Um, so I'm going to offer them some stories and strategies about how I've kind of connected with my true self so I can feel more authentic. I grew up in a Catholic home in a Catholic town, and I was kind of like hiding my Deepak Chopra books and like <laughs> while my girlfriends were reading Cosmo magazine, and I just felt like I was doing things that were a little different. And whether or not people actually thought it was weird or thought it was different, I perceived it to be weird and different. And basically, I started to think, I want to just be like everyone else. Maybe I should just do what everyone else does. So in, in coaching, this is basically like putting on a mask. Whenever you say, I don't want to be who I am, I want to be someone else just to fit in. Anytime we're putting on a mask, we're saying, there's something wrong with me. We're saying, I don't love and accept myself enough to be who I really am, so I'm going to be whatever this mask is that I need to be to fit in. So as soon as the mask goes on, it's basically like we start to feel shame. Um, we start to feel there's something wrong with me. And I was taking myself from a place of really high emotion, of, of feeling peace and joy and happiness, 
and I was starting to feel shame. I knew I knew how to be a really good student. I knew I knew how to get good grades, and I didn't know how to accept myself if I didn't get good grades. And that was a problem because I put so much pressure on myself to get all A's in college that I was having panic attacks. And whenever we're operating from this place of, I can't accept myself unless, I can't accept myself unless, that's shame. Anytime you're going forward to make a decision or you feel you know, nervous about something, you feel uncomfortable in some situation, ask yourself, am I doing this because it feels genuine to me or am I doing this just to fit in? Am I doing this because within my you know, self it feels right or am I just doing this to please other people? Because people pleasing really gets you nowhere because everyone's got their own opinion. You can never make everyone happy. When you stop doing all the things that you love, eventually you stop laughing. Eventually you stop smiling. Eventually you stop radiating the you that makes you you and that makes you amazing. What's one thing that she said that really struck a chord with you or really inspired you? Um, I'd have to say it was very interesting when she talked about selfish, selfishness not being really a bad thing and that being actually very necessary to be happy and content with ourselves and stuff. I thought that was very interesting. I would never really think of selfishness as almost a good thing. Um, so that was definitely unique from anything I've ever heard before. Yeah, I, I was. I thought this, this the same part she's talking about was very interesting about like how like selfish doesn't like caring about yourself doesn't isn't a bad thing, and, and also about what well, she mentioned a couple minutes before the question in response to the question I asked about how like caring about others is sort of like uh like you 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 can care too much about others like you like you should d make sure you dedicate some time to yourself. So how do you think you'll be able to use some of the messages that she said to your own life? Um, well, I should be going to college next year, so. Just very interested to go into that, really meet a lot of new people, and um, I think it's just going to be such a great opportunity to really like spread my wings there. So I think having these ideas in my head that, you know, whoever I am is okay, not trying to fit in with these people that I'm going to be meeting, because obviously making friends is going to be a big concern going into college, but just be myself, and that's what's really going to draw my best friends to me. First of all, I just want to make sure, like, I just have to try to keep just, like, getting better with who I am as a person, try to, like, m like know myself more. So when I go into college and I can just try to keep, like, maintaining, like, knowing me and make sure I'm always okay first. It's important to remember that being yourself is a lot easier than having to wear a mask. Because the people who matter don't mind. And those who mind don't matter. Weather history tells us that March often starts out as cold, damp, windy, and generally unpleasant. But this usually ends with milder and more pleasant days. In other words, in like a lion, out like a lamb. March is a month of change for the better. And while winter storm Stella has shown this to be right, this quote means much more than just weather. For me, I always like to go out with a bang, but there's nothing wrong with starting with one either. In the coming months, make it your goal to start every month strong and continue that streak until the end. Then recommit to people and things you care about as each new month begins. You'll find yourself more powerful, motivated, and better yet, more able to embrace and drive change in your life. Like March, you can make every month your month of change, personal change, for the better. Yes, change can be good. Who doesn't want that? This wraps up our fourth edition of Franklin Almanac. As we continue to bring you more stories, feel free to email us at almanac at franklin.tv and let us know what you want to see. Your idea can make it on our next episode. As always, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you soon. For Franklin Almanac, I'm Polixeni Manjari.